the next 84 hours of my life will look like this. I'm kind of nervous because of just how remote it is. Sailing 1,000 miles west off the coast of Alaska towards one of the most remote islands in North America. Mind-blowing, so beautiful. No cabin, no comfy bed, just a tent for shelter. It is freezing out there. Over the next several days, I'll be taking this ferry to Dutch Harbor, a remote port in the Aleutian Islands. There is no entertainment and no internet. So what do you do on a journey like this for four and a half days? How boring does it get? And why am I even here? Okay, here we go. That's the ship. The last moments on dry land for the next four days. No idea what to expect. I'm pretty sure it's going to be spectacular and wild, but a little bit uncomfortable too. That's it. On board. <laughs> yep, I'm calling this the anti-cruise. So this is home for the next four days. This is it, the solarium deck. The solarium deck sounds really nice when it's sunny. <laughs> but I'm feeling like tonight it's gonna be cold and not so much solarium as a rain area. There's a shower. Oh, I did not expect a shower. I, for one, was really excited. But not so much about the wildlife and the ocean and all the wild Alaska things. I mean, yeah, that's great too. But I think I was just really excited to be bored. You know, everyday life gets so busy, there's always so much to take care of, and often when I get bored or have nothing to do, I just default to scrolling social media. So here on this bare bones ferry with no Wi-Fi, I'm just excited to dive into boredom. <laughs> Is that weird? It's very, very loud here on deck because of the engines kind of constantly humming. So let's see how that's gonna go um, in terms of sleeping. As you can see, the land is slowly disappearing behind us, which is kind of surreal to see and know that I'm going to be on this ship for the next four days doing this crazy thing where I'm sleeping in a tent on deck rather than in a cabin, but that's fine. So, uh, well, the next thing to do, I suppose, is to put up my tent and try and get to sleep because it's already 10 p.m. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is 10 p.m. That's Alaska for you. I've camped in a lot of crazy places, from the desert to Antarctica. But I gotta say, this is my first time camping on top of a moving boat. My main concern was that the tent might get blown away by the wind without me in it, which is why I brought extra strength duct tape, just in case. But this spot here actually felt quite sheltered. I think it looks great. <laughs> okay. Time to make it cozy in here. Okay, I am all set up and I'm basically ready to go to bed soon. But you know what, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Because the funniest thing is that I could have taken a plane to Dutch Harbor and it would have taken me four hours from Anchorage as opposed to basically five full days of travel on a boat, <laughs> sleeping in my tent on the deck of a very rudimentary fairy. <laughs> I could have flown. But where's the fun in that? You know?
The MV Tastamina, or the Rusty Tusty, as she's affectionately known, and yes, that's a little bit worrying, is part of Alaska's marine highway system. The route I'm taking starts in Homer, on the southwestern coast of Alaska, and leads about 1,000 miles further west into the little-known Aleutian Islands, further west than Hawaii. But unlike tropical Hawaii, these islands are desolate and wind-beaten. In fact, they've been nicknamed the Cradle of Storms for their extreme climate. The ferry only runs four or five times a year and only at the height of summer. Because this is what it can look like out here in winter. <sighs> I just woke up because the captain was making an announcement on um, the loudspeakers here on the ship. Apparently we've just arrived at a port and an island, but it's not the final destination just yet. Anyway, I had a great night of sleep. The earplugs work wonders, so good. Very excited to go get myself a nice hot coffee right now because it is freezing out there. So more good news, this is my tent and this here is the shower and the toilet. It's right there. It's basically like an ensuite if you just, you know, put your imagination to a good use. There are some um, coffee machines down here. Free coffee. Oh no, it's not free. It's three dollars. <laughs> but I can't buy any anyway since I have no coins. Um, but the good news is that we have just stopped here in Kodiak, uh, which you might recognize because it's like the wildlife preserve and um, this part of Alaska. So what I might do is I might just go into town and see if I can get a coffee there. When I boarded the ferry, I had no idea whether I would be able to disembark and check out the various ports of call. So this was actually a really nice surprise. Kodiak is a sleepy fishing community, and the locals tell me that in order to live here, you have to make your peace with the rain. If it says anything, I scuttled straight into a cozy local cafe to get my morning fix. And back on the ferry, I had a surprise waiting for me. I am no longer the only one camping. On deck there's now an entire campsite <laughs> which is kind of nice because I no longer feel alone. <laughs> Leaving Kodiak and seeing all these new people join me on deck started to feel like the true beginning of our journey west. The routine came quickly. The boredom did too. I promised myself that on this trip, I would pursue the ultimate modern luxury. Staring out into the ocean. Being unproductive. Reading several books. Writing. And being bored. Those moments when you just let your mind roam. With no goal, no direction, no specific problem to solve. I think that's one of the cradles of creativity right there. I was loving it. It's amazing just how quickly your body falls into a simple routine of sleeping, waking, eating, observing. You end up following the same motions and eventually one day becomes two, then three, then four, all running at the same slow pace. And then 
it's almost time to leave again. While I was having my breakfast and slowly coming to my senses, we arrived in Cold Bay. And this is what Cold Bay looks like from the ship. So does anybody actually live all the way out here in the most isolated islands of the most remote state? Yeah, and they have been for over 8,000 years. The history of the Unangan, the native population of the Aleutian Islands, makes this one of the oldest continuously inhabited places in the world. A whole new chapter began for the Aleutian Islands when the ships of the Russian Empire arrived and conquered in the 18th century. And then there was World War II, when the islands became a critical strategic point on the map in the battle between Japan and the United States. Of course, all these events served to decimate the local population even more. Today, most of the people who live here are temporary workers who come here from all around the world every year to work in the local canneries. They help process all the fish caught around the North Pacific and the Bering Sea. These canneries are strewn across the archipelago. So just as we leave Cold Bay, uh, the clouds are dissipating and a mountain emerges. I thought this was just a flat island with no major geological features, but there's a huge mountain in the middle of it. Mind blowing, so beautiful. Since we have a lot of time here, I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the ferry. <laughs> so here is the main hallway. And then if you kind of walk ahead down this corridor, this is obviously all on the side and I'm not staying here, but some people are. So if you keep walking and eventually you get to the observation lounge, which is where a lot of people are sleeping, have been sleeping. It's a lot more quiet than upstairs. Maybe I should have stayed here. And then there is the lounge and dining room, which have vending machines and all kinds of um, tools to help you make your meals on the boat, like microwaves and hot water, coffee machines, things like that. A few tables to sit at if you wish. And over there is the dining room. We're not gonna go in and disturb all the nice people dining in there right now, but you can probably imagine it's just 20 tables or so. So not everybody on the ferry sleeps, you know, in like the public areas. Um, there's actually some cabins on the ship. They do exist, but because there's only a few of them and there's, you know, quite a bit of demand for this ferry because it only does the crossing once a month, um, they sell out real quick. So even though I booked my ferry like three months ago, I was still too late for a cabin. But you know what? That's fine because I've been having quite the adventure <laughs> up there on the deck, so no complaints. I spent these few days on the ferry somewhere between a state of total relaxation and anxious boredom, knowing that the upcoming days in the Aleutians will be the complete opposite. For now, just breathe and enjoy.
has been five days. <laughs> it went by so fast. We're just about to arrive in Dutch Harbour and um, in a few hours the ferry will turn around with most of the people still on board and head back to Homer in Alaska. I'm staying. <laughs> I'm staying in the Aleutians for a little while. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous because of just how remote it is and how rugged it is out here, but also really, really excited. It was just the trip on a ferry, right? I just camped for a few days. It wasn't anything grand. But sometimes you don't need to do grand things. I think sometimes maybe you just need to allow yourself to daydream. As the ship arrived at its final port of call in Dutch Harbour on the island of Analaska, I was just really grateful to have spent those peaceful, slow days on the ferry. Welcome to Dutch Harbour. If you want to see what happens next as I stay out here on one of the most remote islands in North America, you'll have to wait until next week. As always, I promise it's going to get adventurous. See you soon.